Eric Paul's in here with 9to5Sports. Sports. Going to be breaking down this big 12-game slate on Wednesday. It's one that should be an interesting slate. I think there's one player that we are just locking into at least 60 DK points. Obviously, he's the cover boy. I went with a safe cover photo for today. Uh, the last two cover photos have been players that were strong plays because of injuries to players above them. And then the last two nights, the players above them that were previously ruled out ended up being active okay so i don't want that to happen again so i went with the safe approach and went with Jokic. okay should be in for a great night for him and he should be a lock so just a reminder if you guys enjoy this coverage make sure to give a like and subscribe i do appreciate that uh, i do want to call out i probably won't have coverage on friday maybe on saturday but then i'll be back to the normal schedule for about the next five months or so for everyday coverage for you guys. So once again, if you enjoy the coverage, make sure to like and subscribe. All right, let's get into the top plays for this slate. All right, so starting with the FanDuel side of it. Once again, guys, going to be starting off with Jokic. Yes, I know we only get one center spot, but I think that we should use it on him. He is just way too cheap on FanDuel, uh, too cheap on drafting as well. But he gets a great matchup going against OKC. Went for 44 DK points against them one time, or FanDuel points. Need more than that from him, but at the same time, also went for 60, okay? OKC has been the easiest matchup for any center um, and you just want to be attacking them. Now, I will say you could potentially go the, the value route as well and go with Paul Reed. A little bit cheap or a little bit too priced up on FanDuel. I think it's going to be a route that should go on DraftKings, and I'll touch on that in a second. One player that I think that will be playing on DraftKings and FanDuel as well is going to be Milton. Um, you know, priced low enough. OK, uh, but it should be a strong like 30 fan to a point play. Uh, I do like the matchup as well. The matchup should be one in which you are chasing. It should be an easy matchup for him. So I think on both fan and DraftKings, uh, he's going to be someone you're looking at. And then getting into it, there are some cheaper players on FanDuel as opposed to DraftKings. And that is typically a good indication of FanDuel messing up the pricing, okay? Because typically FanDuel is a little bit more aggressive. So Jordan Clarkson should be a very safe, I don't want to throw that out there, but should be a safe play. Okay, Mike Conley is going to be out. The mints are going to be there. And most likely the shot attempts and production is going to be there. Um, as current price point of 6.3 on FanDuel, I think that's way too cheap for a player like Jordan Clarkson. And then just calling it out, the LA Clippers are a little bit too cheap uh, on FanDuel. Okay, so Norman Powell, I love the fact that you can play him at small forward or shooting guard. Um, cheap price point for him, especially with Kawhi and um, Paul George out. Okay, the production has been there the last two games. And now, yes, he has been shooting the ball better. And a lot of his production fantasy wise comes from shooting the ball well okay we can see he doesn't get a lot of rebounds or assists but this should be a game in which he's shooting the ball again and i'm just going to bet that he is going to be shooting the ball well or well enough to you know be able to hit value at that price point because it is such a cheap price point i do want to point out if you weren't going to play Jokic, zubak as well a very cheap price point on FanDuel as well all right let's get into the draft inside of it and i'll give you guys the first look build as well so yes i'm going to go from five to down to one for the core plays okay so starting out with core play number five it's going to be paul reed just i don't think it's guaranteed okay but as price point guys especially given the matchup with charlotte one of the best matchups on the slate okay this is a matchup that you've been wanting to chase center wise as well okay uh with them beat out i expect him to get a lot of run and especially given the fact that it's the back end of a back-to-back -back, okay he should be the one getting a lot of run now it wouldn't be surprising to see maybe montrez harrell get 20 minutes and reed to get 20 as well okay montrez harrell didn't get that much many that many minutes in the last game so maybe something that could happen but the fact of the matter is paul reed should still get minutes and at this price point in this matchup it wouldn't be surprising to see him break the slate but he should easily be able to hit value so He's a player I'm going out of my way to play on this slate. And then core play number four is more of a price point thing. Aaron Gordon, and this sounds weird, uh, but I do like the price point. 5.6 for Gordon should be a very strong price point. And you just look at what he's done against OKC the last two games, 31 and 41 DK points. I absolutely love that. OKC Thunder has been a team in which you've been wanting to target DFS wise. And just given the price point, I think that's too cheap for a guy that should be able to go for uh, 30 DK points. I guess my biggest worry is that he is coming off of some efficient night shooting and he needs to do more rebounds or assist wise. And honestly, guys, I hope as the day goes on that I can find a better power forward play. Like honestly, Bogdan Bogdanovich, I don't mind going back to the well with once again tonight, but he's priced up a little bit too much. You know, that is all factors that go into this video for you guys. All right. And then core play number two, Three is going to be Ben Simmons. Okay, Ben Simmons, you know, I guess it wouldn't be shocking to see him sit out on the back end of a back-to-back, -back, but, you know, if he plays, it's going to be tough not to play him. Okay, the last three games have been huge. Really, the only reason I could see why you wouldn't play Ben Simmons is given the fact that the game against Philly, at Philly, was an emotional high for him. Okay, played well. I guess the team didn't win, but played well, and maybe he's not, you know, not as mentally geared into play 
tonight. But also, that could be something that kind of sets him off. You know, he's already been playing well the, the past three games. That could be another kind of mental boost to him. Uh, they went out and played well in Philly. So, you know, at 6.1, it's just too cheap of a price point, especially given the fact that you can play him at a forward spot as well. From their core play, number two is going to be uh, Milton. Okay, just too cheap, I think, on the slate. You know, three straight games of over 30 minutes, um, three straight games averaging over 30 DK points. You know, at 5.5, given this matchup with Charlotte, that is a matchup that, you know, I'll be chasing. And, and he should be a strong safe play for you on the slate. And then you guys already know it. The top core play on this slate is going to be Nikola Jokic. It's just going to be tough for me to avoid him. Coming off of a game in which he had 60 DK points, obviously that's spectacular, but we look at what he's done against OKC. 66 and 53 DK points at 11.6. That just seems a little bit too cheap for him. Uh, so he'll be a stud that I'm certainly paying up for. It wouldn't surprise me if he went for 60 DK points. Now let's try to finish up this build for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and put Jordan Clarkson in there. I do think he might be a little bit too priced up, but at the same time should be a strong price point play for you. Uh, Norman Powell is a player that I like a decent amount on this slate as well. So I'll be playing him. Uh, let's go ahead and put Jordan Clarkson into the shooting guard spot just so I can open up the build a little bit more. Powell at the small forward spot. Then we have some salary left over. I am curious as to if Alec Burks is going to play or not, guys. Uh, I kind of expect him to sit on the back end of a back-to-back. -back. Just he hasn't played that many games thus far, and they are capping his limits. So given the fact that's a back end of a back-to-back, -back, I could see his limits or minutes being limited. Now, the last time that he had a back-to-back, -back, he actually played more minutes when he only played 18 minutes in the first game. So maybe he gets 25 minutes in this game. You know, it's tough to say. I guess if he plays, you would expect him to play slightly more minutes and then he'd be a strong price point play but if he sits then um Hayes would be a fine price point play for you and then a play that I don't love that potentially could get a lot of minutes is gonna be man you know there's a, a potential that he gets 25 minutes um right now I'm hoping that there's better value that opens up so we don't have to play him but for now I'll put him in there and then maybe you know if we have a lot of salary left over maybe we go Ben Simmons and then we can get off of Aaron Gordon who once again I think Aaron Gordon's gonna be a great play but you know we could probably afford to pay up for someone that's a little bit safer yeah I'd be fine with Keldon Johnson there um last two last few games I guess have sucked so I don't know I guess <laughs> he's been a solid productive player this whole season maybe not okay I feel like the last these two builds that I made were ending up in a dead price point range let's see if we can find something else then you know I get <laughs> SETI I guess 7.1 then and then we're not exactly forcing someone in there I feel like we still are this is a weird dead price point Maybe Josh Giddy. I guess I'd be fine with Giddy. We'll go Giddy for now. Giddy and then Seti for now. With Lavert out, he has been productive the last two games. Guess that works. Obviously, there's there's still some work to be done, but it's just a big 12 game slate, and we know some injury news is going to come our way. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed the coverage. If you did, you know what to do. Please give me a like, subscribe. I do appreciate that. If you guys want access to any of the nine to five tools, it is available for golf members. Okay, but included in that, I have add-ons for NFL and NBA. Okay, you got the cheat sheet as well as the lineup optimizers for those sports. Uh, so check that out. It's available for $10 a month. I try to make that a great value for you guys. All right, thanks for watching. Let's have a good slate. And as always, guys, let's keep cashing.